seven signs he is just not that into you. Now, I'm really excited to bring this video to you because I had so many conversations alone this week, right? Like I've been working with thousands of single successful women all over the world. But particularly in the last couple of weeks, there has been really so many women I talk to that are just completely confused and don't understand that the men who they're dating is not interested in them. So I decided to put together a list that gives you, right, like a real overview of what to look for in a man so you can stop wasting your time, giving your power and like honesty, girlfriend, like your, your dignity, right? Like a way, your sense of self, your sense of your self-respect, your time, your energy, right? All of that. So I want you to invest that in the right man. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Number seven is he doesn't give your relationship or maybe I should call it a situationship or maybe I should call it a reactionship, a label, right? There's no label. You know, when you guys go out, you know, hang out with friends or like you just, if you're lucky enough that you even go out together, you're always just being introduced as sort of, you know, the friend or, you know, like an acquaintance or, you know, someone I'm ha hanging out with and, you know, we're just having fun, right? And there's, there's just this really non-committal, quote unquote, um, way that how he how he talks about you, right? He also doesn't really, you know, hug you or holds your hands in public, right? Like, because he's like just not that at you. You're kind of like an option, right? Like he's kind of wants to keep you warm in case his other uh, women don't work out, right? Or he's waiting until the right one comes along, right? But like if he doesn't label the situation, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking the first week, right? But let's say, you know, I'm talking to, I'm talking to women who've been dating guys for like years, and there's no label on the relationship, right? There's no monogamy. There's no long-term commitment. That's what I'm talking about. Number six is, what well, picture yourself on a date. He's talking all about himself. And even though you share about yourself, you know what you like to do because you felt like, oh, he just talked about what, what he did last weekend, right? Like how he went... Um, hunting or how he went fishing or how what he whatever he did you know what I mean went to Vegas with friends and then you feel like well I kind of like would expect for him to now ask me what I did last weekend he's not going to do that because he doesn't care so what you then decide is well then let me volunteer like what I want to share right what I did last weekend and so when you share you're like hey you know I last weekend went to, uh, you know, whatever, my friend's party or whatever. We went on a camping trip with the girls or whatever it is, right? There's no, there's no real acknowledgement. There's just like, uh-huh, okay, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, and you feel like you're talking to a wall. So if you feel like, like, wow, there's like no inquiry. Like every time when we talk on the phone, I find myself asking all the questions, right? Like I always like find like, oh, this is so interesting. Tell me more. Oh, every time when we text. Like, I'm the one who's like, oh, tell me more. Like, how was your trip, um, you know, to see your family for Christmas? Or how, you know, how did the business meeting go? But then actually, you realize when you look back or when you just look at your text, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like really simple, or your emails or your online dating inbox, whatever it is, right? Your online uh, dating app inbox. And you're like, wait a minute, there's like no questions that he is he asked like there's no no inquiry right like there's no okay so girlfriend that moment because one thing i want to do in this video too is actually like to okay like just pull back a little bit you know what i mean and actually see like is something coming back and if nothing is coming back then it's probably time to move on right because what you're doing and this is really important and this is like what most women come to me for we're actually bridging why you do that how you've done that in childhood and you caused that pseudo connection, right? You didn't get the acknowledgement, the warmth, the attunement from your parent, from your mom, from your dad. And so then you started to serve, right? You started to focus on the parent, right? You started to make jokes, become the entertainer, become the class clown, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get the attention. And so it feels like, oh, we're having a good connection going on, right? Like it's all, it's all happening but it's only you. It's a one-way street, right? And you're only being liked as long as you perform. And if you don't perform anymore, right? Like then 
there's nobody coming and asking you questions. And so that's what we want to truly break through. Number five is, are they always last minute changes or cancellations, right? So what I've seen with my women that have come to me over the years, is like men are just like, oh, hey, can we actually move our Friday day to Saturday? You know, oh, sorry, you know, something came in between. Oh, my friend uh, came over for a visit, surprisingly, it came into town. Um, we're hanging out tonight, right? And, oh, you know, I can't meet you tonight because, you know, my my work meeting um, is going longer. This is fine if this happens like once, but this happens like all the time. So either there's like a complete cancellation, like, hey, um, rain check. And, but there's no, like, hey, let's do it next Thursday at 7 p.m., right? But instead it's just rain check, hello, just checked out. And the reason why is he's just not an interview. But he's actually thinking, wait a minute, until next Thursday or Friday, right? I can see what other women I can meet, you know, what other opportunities I can line up for myself. So I want to keep the options open, right? Because if you're dealing with an emotionally unavailable attachment style, if you're dealing with a dismissive avoidant attachment style, right? They will want to keep the options open, right? They don't want you to count on them, but they don't want to be relied on, right? Like they're like, no, don't rely on me. I don't rely on you. We're all good, right? Like everybody is on their own. And then, hey, if it works out, great. If it doesn't work out, great. And so again, if that happens, like don't be so quick to reschedule, like really acknowledge. And this is like so great. This is like what my women learned, right? To step into their queen, right? And say, hey, not okay, not okay, right? Like I have my plans for you and that means I couldn't meet my girlfriend or I, that means I couldn't do this and I do that, whatever it is, right? And so, um, you know, I really appreciate like more notice, right? Because otherwise I'm not going to set up dates with you anymore because I know already you're going to cancel it. You know, I already know that you're going to reschedule it. So I'm going to have uh, another plan as well. You know what I mean? So it's almost like you're double booking yourself. But of course, the long-term strategy is to simply step into your power and um, not make yourself available anymore. Like, hey, what about next Thursday? I'm not available, right? Now the man has to actually fight for you. You know, but he's if he's just not that into you, then he will actually just like say sayonara, right? Um, Alivederci. Number four, you don't get any prime time dates. You don't get the Friday night. You don't get the Saturday night. You don't get the special times, right? Like he just reaches out to you like just super randomly. And you know, like this, you always like wondering like, wait, what are you doing on these other dates? And he talks about like friends. He's like, who are those friends, right? And so this is like pretty straightforward. Like if you don't get the prime time and you know, I cannot tell you how many times I need to tell women that because like, it's always the same thing, right? Like the woman meets a man, super excited about him, and she's never felt this way before, right? Like he, you know, he makes her all those promises, but she doesn't get the prime time dates. He's like, he has to work late on Friday. You know, he has a business trip on Saturday, right? Or he has to take business, uh, business like partners out for dinner and whatever, whatever. So there's like always an excuse, right? And so if you feel like, wait a minute, if I look at my calendar and he fits me in into like a Wednesday afternoon or like a quick, you know, I had like one client and the guy's like, oh, hey, how about we meet like on Tuesday morning for breakfast uh, before I go to work? Huh? Can you s spell turning yourself into a pretzel like any bigger, right? Like what? Like you just like, he's going to turn, like just going to fit you into his schedule? I don't think so. That's not queenly behavior, right? But what it shows you is here's the, you're not really his priority, right? You're like, you know, if it fits in, great. If it doesn't, great. I'm just going to continue living my life. And I'm certainly, and this is number three, don't make any compromises. No compromises. And so this goes with, hey, I live three hours away from you. So, I mean, you know, you can come to me, right? You know, we can meet afterwards. But I mean, um, I can't bring you home because, you know, I have like my kids and my kids obviously can't meet you. And so it's like, wait a minute. Wow. So what? He expects you to drive three hours to see him like for dinner and then drive back home or something or maybe even um, 
have sex in a hotel and then and then drive home or whatever right like what is happening right like so there's no compromise that's not like hey let's meet at least halfway right like oh hey let me drive to you and i know this is like so confronting but i would tell you that i had women where the guy was driving two three hours to pick them up to bring them back to his place right so it's like six hours of driving you know what i mean um in and and like whatever you know in one day basically right and then did the same dropping her back off or whatever the case may be right because the car was broken or whatever you know what i mean she had to figure things out um so that's what it made us right a man will move mountains we had men who met a woman halfway across the world right like he was in new zealand she was in germany and they met in florida right like i mean you know so if you have a guy who's like well you know he lives like an hour away or i remember when we lived in the bay area and i kid you not so we were like speaking at the great love debate this is great it was a great singles event the women were on the one side men were on the other side and then we we're just like asking questions did some research right and we got to see like hey how off are we actually with what we think about men and men what they think about women and one question we had is like there was like this this thing it's just really strange it's like if you're in a certain zip code meaning so in the bay area we have um three bridges right we have like the the bay bridge and we have the golden gate bridge and uh we have one other bridge i forgot um and so basically if you lived across that bridge if you didn't live in that part where there was no bridge they're like oh she's even living on the other side of the bridge like i'm not gonna date her oh what you know what i mean so it's like you must not be that into her right because you know the guy that I dated was willing to, uh, you know, to go to a conference in Santa Barbara all the way from Germany. You know what I mean? So I want you to just give yourself like a reality check. You know, don't buy into the excuses. Don't buy into the smallness. Look at what men are capable of. Because it's so easy to just generalize. Well, this is like what's happening. You know, I mean, you know, he just has so many hours in the day and he has his kids or he has his house or he has his cat or he has his dog and all the things, right? Like, no, no. Stop, you know what I mean? Like, so do other men. And they're still gonna sh fully show up, okay? So stop making excuses for him. And this is like a, t uh, like a for sure telltale sign, which is short text, number two, short text. So here you are, and I love this, right? So when women start working with me, I'll have them send me screenshots. And this is really fun, you know, because I get to actually see how much conversation the women are making Right? How much they're trying to solve the problem that the guy said he has, or he just sends like her like a photo of him hiking, and then she writes like a whole paragraph about like, oh, that's so beautiful, and the weather's so gorgeous, and how is your dog? And you know, um, I'm so glad you're having so much fun. Right? He just sent you a text like with an image. That's it. He doesn't deserve to get like that much response from you, right? Like he's just not that into you like if he just like like okay let me see how little breadcrumbs i can like throw at her right like let me just see how like you know what i mean how little i have to do how little effort i have to put into this and i get still like full-on responses back right so what i learn what i actually work on with my women is learning to mirror right so either you can't respond at all you're like okay whatever you just sent me a photo whatever that means you know what i mean or you can just mirror it you can send a photo back you just say nice, but it's something like really short. And what I find is when, when the women do that, right? The men are like, wait a minute, are you okay? How are you? Do you want to have call, call tonight? Right? Out of the sudden, the man is leaning in a little bit more, right? And starting to fight and occasionally actually starting to get interested. He was just not that interested, but now he is actually interested because she's like, Oh, here, do you want to have a little bit of your own medicine? You know what I mean? Here we go. This is how I feel. I get this image from you and I don't know what to do with it. So now here you go. You have an image from me. You know what I mean? And that's it. Um, so try that out. Write short text. Write them back a short text or just ignore it. Just ignore it. Like if it's just a statement, no question. You can even ignore it. Add my girlfriends. Uh, my girlfriends. <laughs> my clients uh, do that as well. And number one is no intro to friends or family right and this is like really interesting where you sort of like this best kept secret in town and you're wondering like who are his friends does he have friends but then you look on social media like yeah he has a lot of friends oh yeah he just went out on a yacht 
uh, yesterday, you know, true, true story. One of my clients, like, you know, just saw on social media, like had time of his life, had a birthday party, right? So he's like so busy, um, but can't like get back to her. And no intro to friends, like, okay, well, I'd love to meet those friends too, or like family, do you have family? Where do they live? Right, I don't know, you know? So there's never this sort of introduction to his like social circle. And here's two reasons why. For one, what if his friends end up liking you, right? And so what if his friends actually tell you like, hey, don't bother with this guy, right? Because that happened to me too when I dated. You know, I had guys actually say, don't bother. You know what I mean? Like this, he's, you know what I mean? He's a player, right? Like he's, he has other girls. Um, you know what I mean? Or he just like, he just, he just can't commit, right? Um, or, right, or, or he, they put pressure on him and they're like, what are you doing, dude? This is like an amazing woman. And we will not let this happen. You know what I mean? We don't let you to let you do this because last week you brought this girl and this week you'll bring this girl and they don't deserve that, right? So we have this like oftentimes a situation where like a friend actually came to the girl, texted her and be like, hey, just want to be honest with you. Sometimes it's a female friend, sometimes it's a guy friend, doesn't matter, right? But like, hey, I just want to let you know. I just want to just give you the lay of the land, right? Like he's you know what I mean? And so men want to avoid that, right? And then with family, even worse, you know what I mean? Like they get so much pressure, right? Because of the mom, the dad, like, she's so awesome. Dude, what's wrong with you? You know, why are you not dating her? Why are you not engaged to her? You know what I mean? Why are you not bringing her home more, right? So of course, he doesn't want to do that either because you're not, you're not in his future. Let's just face it. That's like the bonus one, right? Like you, you're not in his future. He talks about the future, but you're not in it. You know what I mean? He talks about how he's going to go on this trip to uh, to Brazil, right? How he's going to go hang gliding uh, in Paraguay, how the, all those things. You're not in it. There's like no, you know what I mean? But he's happy to talk about it all day long, right? So if that happens, like definitely pull back and stop making him a priority. Now, next, if you haven't made that yet, make sure to take our free love quiz to get the man and relationship you want and fast by hopping over to getlovequiz.com or simply clicking the link in the description or comments below. Lots of love to you ladies and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.